after receiving revelation. Brother Han is going to speak tonight new revelation. Revelation that he was able to, to receive when he was studying. We are going to receive it through him tonight. In Jesus' Ooh. name. Amen. You know, uh, as uh, BFS says that, you know, I mean, uh, she's, that's how she mentioned that uh, God is God's timing. That is definitely God's timing for you. You know, uh, actually in this time and moment, God is actually uh, preparing your heart. Amen. He, he is actually, there are certain things you are not ready yet for Amen. marriage. Yes, so, Yes, Lord. This is, yeah, it's on a more a maturity in marriage. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So God is actually, um, gradually, he's actually uh, transforming you to be, yeah, just like the wishes, uh, you know, the, 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 the wife, right? <laughs> so and I'm a God wants you to be a wife of his way. And what he wants you to be. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, so praise I, God. I agree. I agree with the word, uh, Sister YY. Praise God. So let's worship our. <laughs> as we wait on the Lord, let's worship <laughs> Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Woo! Thank you. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> And we, indeed, we will indeed receive all the glory, all the glory, Jesus, you will receive it all. We praise you, Jesus. Are you ready to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Are you ready to give him all the praise, all the honor? Let us raise our hands and dedicate this service father we pray and we decree that your presence will move your peace will overflow in this place and most of all jesus your love will overflow your living waters will overflow in jesus mighty name amen and amen
train, and the train of Israel fills the temple.
As you're lifting up your hands to the Lord and declaring His holiness in this room. Come on, church. Let us honor the Lord for this day. Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord for giving you the strength. Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord in your worship. Honor the Lord in the lives of your children. Let us honor the King of kings and the Lord of lords. As we welcome the reigning King in this place. And you will reign supreme. And you will reign in majestic. He will reign forevermore. You are Jesus. You are Jesus. You are Jesus. The healer. The healer. The great provider. When David prayed and said to God, Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? <laughs> Lift up your countenance and bless the name of the Lord your God. So this is the words of the Lord to your church. Why are you downcast? Oh, Rabakaya Sikala. The Lord God is here. And the Lord God says, I will bless you. I will bless your children's children. I will lift up my countenance upon you and give you shalom. Numbers chapter 23, 23 to 26, the Lord says, The Lord God bless you and keep you. The Lord God makes His grace shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord God makes His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord God lift up His countenance upon you and give you shalom. Receive it, church. For the reigning king is here. Sing a new song to him. Create a song of worship in your heart. Hallelujah.
song Lord God says, let your kingdom, his kingdom come, his will be done on earth. Jesus, Jesus, forever your kingdom yes, reigns, yes. oh Lord. Thank you that you are so faithful, oh Lord God, so loving, oh Lord Jesus. Your presence is so strong, oh Lord God, for two or three gathered in your name, then you are in the midst of them. We thank you, Lord God, for the blessing that you gave, O oh Lord God, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When you says in Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26, O oh Lord, it is so strong, it is so true. When you says the Lord God bless you and keep you, the Lord God makes his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord God lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Father, tonight we'll receive the peace that passes through be a human understanding. And we declare, we decree that we will arise and shine. We will represent you and your excellences, O oh Lord God. O oh God, O oh God, thank you for using us, O oh Lord Jesus. Thank you for using our lives as an instrument so that your name, O oh Lord God, will be made known. To God be all the glory. Prepare our hearts tonight, O oh Lord God, to be ministered, O oh Lord, through, by your word, through your servant, Brother J.K. Han. We thank you for his life. In the name of Jesus, this is our worship. All victorious, beloved children of God in this God's international chamber will say, Amen. 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 Let us give God the glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. The there are new many faces now in this God's international chamber. And to God be all the glory. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. Hallelujah. To the chamber of God. So let us prepare our hearts to be ministered by the word of the Lord. And everyone is so excited because we are digging deeper to the book of Revelation. Revelation. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let us welcome the servants of the Lord, Brother J.K. Han. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shalom and welcome everybody, especially to who Shalom. are new to this international chamber. And before even I begin tonight, I just want to release what the Lord has impressed from my heart. And it's this, that wherever you are right now, God's presence is in your midst. Amen. God's presence is in your midst. Amen. And I believe that the word of God is being shared tonight. God is going to use that word through his Holy Spirit to minister to every single one of us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. So tonight I'm going to continue on from where I have left off, no, where Pastor Lyra uh, uh, left off uh, from uh, last week. So let me share this and let me begin and see. Oops. Oh, I have uh, got myself. <laughs> Let me start again, I think. This is the thing about technology. <laughs> Why am I not getting this out? Bear with me.
I'm still not able to get what I want to do. God. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, what I'm going to share tonight is the second part uh, that was shared from last week by Pastor Lyra. It says, when the end comes, and part two, what the end holds for the saints. Last week when Pastor Lyra shared, she shared part one, is what the end holds for the sinners. So we want to recap what she has shared so that we there is a continuation from last week, what the end holds for the sinners. And Pastor Lyra shared from Revelation 14 verses 6 to 11. So let me just go through with you verses 6 to 11 that will give you a continuation, especially for those who were not here last week. So if we look at verses 6 to 11, it talks about the three angels. The first angel flying in mid heaven with an eternal gospel to preach to the inhabitants of the earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God with all and reverence and give glory and honor and praise and worship because the hour of his judgments has come. With all your heart, worship him who created the heaven and the earth, the sea and the springs of water. Then the second angel followed saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She who has made all nations drink the wine of the passion of her immolarity, corrupting them with idolatry. Then a third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, Whoever worships the beast, and his image and receive the mark of the beast on his forehead or on his hand. He too will have to drink of the wine of the wrath of God, mixed undiluted into the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and brimstone, flaming sour in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb that is Christ. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day and night, those who worship the beast and his image, whoever received the mark of his name. And Pastor Lara also shared about the three aspects of what she shared, that is in terms of what is happening to those sinners. There is a final proclamation from the first angel. The second angel made a final pronouncement and the third angel was a fearful portrayal and she shared with us how we need to respond that especially for those of us who know the Lord we need to be aggressive we need to carry the fire of revival in us but above all we need to be bold and the call for us is that we need to be saved and we can be saved if we come to Jesus and call on him by faith. And Romans 10 verse 9 says that because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, recognizing his power, his authority and majesty as God, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And Acts 16 31 says, and they answered, believe in the Lord Jesus as your personal savior, and entrust yourself to him, and you will be saved, you and your household, if they also believe. So that is what Pastor Raya was sharing with us. But today, we come to this second part, part two, what the end holds for the sin. We were looking at verses, early verses up to verse 11, but look at the contrast when it comes to verse 12. And we see verse 12 says, here is the encouragement for the steadfast endurance of the saints. God's people, those who habitually keep God's commandments and their faith in Jesus. They then I heard the distinct voice of a voice of a voice from heaven saying, right, blessed, happy, prosperous to be admired 
are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, blessed indeed says the Spirit, so that they may rest and have relief from their labors for their deeds to follow. So now you see we are leaving the wrath and judgment of verses 6 to 11, and now we have been exposed to the sweet fragrance of God's grace. So let us see what the end holds for the saints. When I was preparing this, I was wondering in, in this particular portion of, of scripture, why the Lord spoke about what the end holds for the sinners before he speaks about what the end holds for the saints. In the letter to the three seven churches, Jesus always starts with commendation before he comes to condemnation. But here it seems to be the reverse. The Lord is telling us what the end holds for the sinners before he speaks about what the end holds for the saints. He's like telling us, I'm sharing this with you before I share the good news, the bad news before the good news, so that you will be able to understand, to say, I do not want to go there. I want to make sure that I come this way. I want to make sure that I will receive the rewards for being a saint of God. So we are going to look at three different aspects of what the end holds for the saints. The first one is the proclamation of their faithfulness. The second is the proof of their faithfulness. And thirdly, the profit of their faithfulness. You see in this particular aspect, the underlying common feature is the word faithfulness. It is the word faithfulness. And I am being reminded very clearly of this word of faithfulness of the saints. Al Shaddai Prayer Altar in the past week, we were or we went on a prayer drive to the state of Tranganu as well as Kelantan. I think in this chamber tonight, Siwe, Sister Teresa, and Esther Joy was together with me. And as we were driving through the states, we also visited the small churches along the way in some of those small towns with congregations not more than 20. But I see the underlying word of that body and the word is faithfulness. They remain faithful in spite of being in such places and such a difficult in terms of circumstances, but yet they knew the call that God has placed upon them to be where they are. Many a times when we are living in the big cities, in the comfort of our big churches, but we forget about those saints that are in the smaller places. And tonight, I want to just honor their faithfulness. I want to honor the faithfulness to remain steadfast in the call that God has placed upon their life. So the, the key for, for receiving the reward at the end of the day is faithfulness. But God is telling us, even as you remain faithful, God says, I want you to proclaim your faithfulness. I do not want you to just remain silent, but you need to proclaim your faithfulness. And as you proclaim your faithfulness, I want you to prove your faithfulness. Let there be such an evidence within your life that you are faithful. And then you will receive the reward or the profit of the faithfulness. When the end comes, you will receive that profit. So I want to move on to these three different aspects of what the end holds for the saints who remain faithful to their calling. So the first thing as we look at the first part is that proclamation in verse 12 says, here is encouragement for the steadfast endurance of the saints of God's people 
those who habitually keep God's commandments and their faith in Jesus. Who keep God's commandments and their faith in Jesus. So there is a verse. That word is called patience. Patience literally means steadfast endurance. It's not just steadfast, but it is endurance. Going the extra mile. It's a picture of a person who cannot be swayed from his simple faith in and devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I see that. I see that in our prayer drive. I see that. And I see the person, the Pastor Daniel, who is in Guamusan. Many of you may not know where that is. In the really, really remote place, he ministers to the Orang Asli or Orang Asal or to the firstborn of the land. That is the indigenous people of the land. You have to go in, into the jungles to minister. And he has been doing that for years. I see the word steadfast. I see the word endurance. And this morning I was in prayer with him, praying for my state together. And you can see the passion that is within him. He will not be swayed from his simple faith and his devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we proclaim our faithfulness that in spite of the horrors of the tribulation periods and the threats of Antichrist, these believers will remain faithful to the Lord. They will refuse to bow to this world. They will refuse to give their worship to the devil. They have endured and they will continue to endure every attack and every affliction with the confident knowledge that their God was executing an eternal plan. So they will remain faithful even unto the death, seeing that in the end their faith would be vindicated and Satan and his kingdom would be judged. That means they will proclaim their faithfulness in spite of all of those horrors, in spite of the things that is happening, they will refuse to step down. They will continue to proclaim. And as we continue on, say these are the people. They know that they are part of a victorious people, that even while they suffer, so they know that even in their suffering, in their faithfulness, God sees their faithfulness. And this is a lesson that tonight I want to share with you that we here today, we would do well to learn this truth that the world and the devil are always trying to get us to compromise. There is a constant barrage, especially in these days, designed to cause us to abandon God and the way of righteousness. And we see that happening today in society even among the young ones especially. The devil would love nothing better than for us to get our eyes off Jesus and his will for our lives and our church. He would love for us to lower our standards, relax our hold on our convictions, and abandon the way of righteousness in these days. After all, it would be easier. It will cause the church to be more acceptable in the community. It would take some of the pressure off. The only problem is that it would offend God. It would cause him to remove his power from our midst. It would cause him to write Ichabod above our door like he has in countless other churches. First Samuel 4 verse 21 says, and she named the boy Ichabod saying, the glory has left Israel because the ark of God had been taken and because of the death of a father-in-law and a husband. So may we never allow God to remove his glory from us, especially from our church, from the body of Christ. So we need to just press on and proclaim forth our faithfulness to our God. So what is the best course of action for us today? The best cause of action in these days is the same 
course of action chosen by the saints in these verses. It's a course of action articulated by Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. He says this, Therefore, my beloved veteran, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, we are to stay the cause for the glory of God. So I pray that may we take heed to this call, to this example of Paul, to remain steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. How can we remain steadfast and unmovable only when we are anchored in God's word. Only when we are anchored in God's word can we be steadfast, can we be unmovable. The world may not appreciate our efforts for the Lord, but God does. He sees every sacrifice for his name and he will reward his people in due time. In our prayer drive, to the state of Tringanu and Kelantan. I see these people, even as they remain faithful, many a times I'm sure they have questions asking themselves, God, am I in the right place? In this place where my congregation has remained no more than 20 for the last 10 years, am I in the right place? And I thank God that we are able to be there to encourage them. And we say to them, you are in the right place. God has put you in the right place. Remain faithful to the call. And God sees that. And in due time, you will receive your reward. So when you look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 41, as well as 1 Corinthians 3, verse 10 to 5, these are the principles that we can glean from the judgment of the nations. So let's look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 41 to 42, it says this, He who receives and welcomes a prophet, because he's a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous, honorable man, because he's a righteous man, will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives to one of these little ones, those who are humble in rank or influence, even a cup of cold water to drink, because he is my disciple, Truly, I say to you, he will not lose his reward. So, we must make sure that we do not lose that reward. And 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10 to 15 says this, According to the remarkable grace of God, which was given to me to prepare me for my task, like a skillful master builder, I laid a foundation, and now another is building on it. But each one must be careful how he builds on it. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one which is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. But if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will be clearly shown for what it is. For the day of judgment will disclose it, because it is to be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality and character and the worth of each person's work. If it any person's work which has built on this foundation, there is any outcome of his effort remains and survive this test, he will receive a reward. But if any person's work is burned out by the test, he will suffer the loss of his reward, yet he himself will be saved, but only as one who has barely escaped through fire. So it is important for us to recognize this truth. And as we continue on to Matthew chapter 25, it says this, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you blessed of my father, you favored of God, appointed to eternal salvation, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me with help and ministering care. I was in prison and you came to me, ignoring personal danger. 
Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give us something to drink? And when did we see you as a stranger and invite you in, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? The king will answer and say to them, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, to the extent that you did for one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it for me. You did it for me. Oh, hallelujah. May we, in the name of Jesus, continue to proclaim our faithfulness and touch through the touching of the life of others that the Lord will bring to us. As what Matthew 25 says, it is evidenced by us reaching out. When we proclaim our faithfulness by reaching out and touching the life of those God brings around us. So the first aspect is to proclaim our faithfulness. The second one, we want to move on now to the second one. And the second one is this. After we proclaim our faithfulness, we need to prove our faithfulness. We need to prove our faithfulness. The proclamation of faithfulness is how we reach out and touch others. The proof of our faithfulness is inward. And he says this clearly. These people demonstrated their faithfulness to the Lord in two ways. Keeping his commandments and they kept their faith. So we see the difference now between the two. You proclaim your faithfulness when you reach out to others. You proclaim it. But the proof of your faithfulness is seeing inwardly. You demonstrate the proof through yourself by keeping God's commandments and keeping the faith. So when we do as he tells us in his word, we prove that we love him. Look at John 14 verse 15, he says this, if you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. Two things, keep and obey God's command. Our obedience to the Lord, I tell you, is irrefutable evidence that we have experienced the new birth. So if you want to prove to people our faithfulness, this is what it is. First John chapter two, verse three to five says this, and this is how we know daily by experience that we have come to know him, to understand him and be deeply acquainted with him. If we habitually keep Focus on his precepts and obey his commandments or his teachings. Whoever says, I've come to know him, but does not habitually keep focus on his precepts and obey his commandments teachings is a liar. And the truth of the divine word is not in him. But whoever habitually keeps his word and obeys his precepts and treasures his message in his entirety in him, the love of God has truly been perfected and it is completed and has reached maturity. By this we know for certain that we are in him. What does it mean? It means this, that we need to obey his commandments. But in obeying his commands, we need to know his commands. How can you obey when you do not know? That means we must continually be in his word. His word must be the one that holds us. So we need to spend time in God's word. And I like what uh, Pastor Terrence of Penang told us one day. He says, you must not read God's word. <laughs> he says, I know you'll be angry with me when I tell you this. You must not read God's word. You must study God's word. There's a difference between reading and studying. You can read. The next moment you can forget. But when you study, it means you need to spend time. You need to go deeper in the word. 
And when we do that, it brings about a totally different perspective to God's word. So that is the proof of his faithfulness. And as we continue on, by keeping the faith, these people had refused to deny Jesus. They had maintained their faith in him, even when doing so was costly. That is the proof of their faithfulness. Many in the tribulation will go to their death rather than to deny the Lord Jesus. How much easier would it be for them to deny him with their lips, even as they embrace him in their hearts? But they are not hypocrites. They will not deny him, even though it will cost them everything. By refusing to worship the Antichrist, they will suffer greatly. They will not be able to buy or sell. They will be hunted and hounded and executed for their allegiance to Jesus. Still, they will remain faithful. So God is telling us, you want to prove your faithfulness? Not only you need to remain true to my word, but you must lift up my word. You have to lift up God's word. Even in the face of death, you've got to remain faithful. So I ask myself the question, when the time comes, when the crunch comes, will I still be able to remain faithful? My prayer tonight for each one of us, as we hear these words, later on I will say this, faithfulness is the key. Faithfulness is the key for us to receive the profit or the reward God has for us. That must be our motivation. And I pray that we will press on, press on. And if you continue to look at the saints, they have set us a sterling example for those of us living in these days. As we know, the trend in churches and among churches in our day is become more like the world. That is the easy path to follow. It gains you favor with the world and helps you grow in numbers. However, when you compromise the word of God and water down the gospel message, you forfeit the presence and power of God. You might have a full house, a huge house, Mountains of cash, but if there's no power and touch of God, those things amount to less than nothing. We must say, I would rather have Jesus. Someone say this, you cannot water down the word of God. Because the word of God is God's word. You cannot water down the word of God. You can water down man's word, but you cannot water down the word of God. But today, as we see, unfortunately, churches continue to compromise. Many of you may have seen very recently, there was a video. I was trying to get the video I couldn't get of a church in America where the pastor came out openly and renounce God's word. And he was promoting the LGBT agenda in church. And you heard what happened. The church was struck by lightning and it was on fire and the steeple collapsed. And I see that this is an evidence God is telling us as his sons and daughters as well as his body, I cannot take it anymore. I cannot take it anymore where in the house of God there was an open defiance on my word by the pastor of the church no less. And God says, I'm going to show my hand now. And I still, 
I believe in my heart that you are going to see more and more of these things, the unfaithfulness of the body of Christ. And God says, I'm going to show, I'm going to show you all what I'm capable of doing when my word is being compromised. So we have seen two aspects of this. Firstly, the proclamation of their faithfulness. We need to proclaim out to the people and then the proof of our faithfulness, the inward evidence of our faithfulness. And now we come to the final aspect and that is the profit of their faithfulness. You see, from a worldly point of view, these people gave up a lot for their faith in Jesus. They suffered, many of them starved, they endured hardships that we cannot even begin to imagine. We saw the video of the church in, in India. The persecution that they faced was horrendous. They watched their wives, in fact, they themselves, not just starved to death, but they were beaten to death. They were put on fire. Mothers watched their children suffer. What did it profit them? From a worldly point of view, what was, did it profit them? What payoff was there in such suffering and pain? But this verse tells us about their future. That if you are safe, it tells about ours too as well. First, firstly, we are told that these people who will die in and for Jesus are blessed. Oh, they are blessed. They are blessed. They are blessed. This word has the idea of being happy. It means being supremely blessed, fortunate, well off. The idea here is that those who die in the Lord leave a harsh, unfriendly world for a better place. For a better place. Indeed, they are going off to a better place. In fact, we have heard so often that when a believer dies, we say, oh, they are going off to a better place. It is so true. Paul knew this truth. If you look at Philippians verse 1, verse 23, he says, I'm hard pressed between the two. I have a desire to leave this world and be with Christ, for that is far, far better. In 2 Timothy 4, 6 says this, For I'm already been poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure from this world is at hand, and I will soon go free. Death for the child of God is not the horrible monster we have made it out to be. It's nothing more than a doorway that allows us to step out of our time, our earthly time, into eternity. It is a portal that allows us to leave this land of death and step into that land of life. Death for the child of God is not a grinning devil. It is a smiling friend that comes to usher us home into the waiting arms of our Savior. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. In fact, all of us, should never ever fear death. If God wants to bring us home, be prepared, be prepared. It is a better place. But there is indeed no comparison between what we have in this world and what will be ours when we get home to glory. So if you look at this verse that we have read, touches on two of the blessings that will hold special importance for those saints living through the horrors of the tribulation. The first thing is that we will rest from our labors. Secondly is that we will be rewarded for our labors. 
So look at this. They will rest from their labors. So these people have labored for Jesus in a difficult day. Now they are going home to rest. The word labor does not refer to the act of working, but to the weariness that comes from working. The word literally means a beating, grief, sorrow, trouble. It can be used to speak of beating the breast out of sorrow. The idea here is of a soldier who has fought in the wars and the battles and has grown weary. And in the wars, they always give time to soldiers for some rest and recreation, hour and hour. It pictures the sailors who has guide, helped guide the ship through the many terrible storms. He needs to have a shore leave. So he needs to have a shore leave. And now God says, you can come into my presence. You can come into my presence. These saints have given all for Jesus on earth. And in God, it written was weariness of the flesh. Now they go into the presence of God to rest. You look at Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 to 6. We will see this. Let's look at Revelation 2. It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth has passed away, vanished, and there's no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, arrayed like a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice on the throne saying, See, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will live among them. And they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be death. There will be no longer sorrow and anguish, or crying or pain, for the former order of things has passed away. And he who sits on the throne says, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Right, for these words are faithful and true, they are accurate incorruptible and trustworthy and he said to me it is done i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end to the one who thirsts i will give water from the fountain of the water of life without cause and that is revelation 21 verse 1 to 6. and if we continue on the word rest means to cease from labor in order to recover and to cause it speaks of a bit of state of refreshment. And this is what we hear. In fact, Prophet Slidet on Tuesday was speaking to us about these keywords: rest, discover, and then recover. So the profit of our faithfulness is that we will rest from our labors. And it says this, as they will rest from their labors, many today in the world are weary. It gets hard to live for Jesus in a world that does not care about him. It's hard to be holy in a godless world. It makes us weary, but there is coming a day of rest. One day, we'll step out of this world and we'll enter his presence. When we arrive there, we have late aside the burdens, cares, and labors of this life. We will be able to find refreshment in His presence. He knows how to refresh us here too. He can give us strength sufficient for our days. We need to learn to rest, need to learn to discover, and then we will recover. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And this is the proof. Deuteronomy 33, 25 says, your strongholds will be iron and bronze. And as your days are, so will your strength, your rest and security be. So let us carry on in spite of the weariness that we feel from time to time. Yes, I feel weary. Many a times as we go through our days, weariness come upon us. Let us not come to that place where we throw up our hands and say, God, I give up. What's the use? God help us to look beyond this hard hour and see a day 
when we will stand complete in his presence. I pray that we will look beyond, beyond. In fact, Brother Stephen is here in this chamber together with the man. On Monday night, we were looking at this key word. We need to know what is our life purpose. God has a purpose for us. We need to find and know what is that purpose. And we know that's purpose. We want to make sure we accomplish that purpose. Many of us look at goals rather than purpose. We need to shift our attention from goals to purpose. More so, God's purpose for us. So we will rest from our labors, but more than that, this is what we are looking for. We will be rewarded for our labors. Hallelujah. The profit of our faithfulness is that we will be, we will be able to rest from our labors and then we will be rewarded. We are not just looking for a reward. We are being faithful. God rewards us for our faithfulness. So we are told that their works will follow them. In other words, the labor for the Lord in that, that day will not be in vain. God sees everything that we do for his glory. And then what he says, I will reward you. I will reward you for it all. That is how it will be for the children of God one day. We will stand in his presence and he will reward us for the things he allows us to do for his glory. In fact, in one of the earlier sharings, I was sharing about the reward of the crowns that he's going to give to us. The many crowns. If we look at the word of God, especially in Corinthians, it talks about the crowns, the five crowns that God wants to give to us. And surprising, I still have my crown here, those of you. <laughs> I still have my crown here. This is my crown. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. So he is going to reward us for the things that he allowed us to do for his glory. Hallelujah. And if we have no time to read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5, it says this, according to the remarkable grace of God which was given to us to prepare me for my task. Like a skillful master builder, I laid a foundation and now another is building on it. But we must be careful how he builds it. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one which is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. So remember, our foundation is Jesus Christ, nothing else nothing else. And it says that at the end of it, when we survive this test, we will all receive a reward. A reward. Hallelujah. So we will be rewarded for our labors. He has saved us by grace. He gave us his spirit. Anything we have ever done for him has been because he has enabled us to do it. Yet, he is going to reward us. Isn't that amazing? We know what we will do with this rewards. The crowns that I mentioned earlier, we will cast them at his feet and we will praise him for his grace and salvation and his service. Revelation 4, 9 to 11 says, wherever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanksgiving to him who sits on the throne, to him who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and they worship him who live forever and ever. And they throw down their crowns before the throne saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God. Receive the glory and the honor and the power for you created all things. And because of your will that exists and were created and brought into view. So we will sing, what a day that will be. It will be a glorious day when you leave this world to go to our reward. So I have shared tonight on the three aspects of what the end holds for the same. The proclamation of the faithfulness, once you proclaim, you'll be able to 
second one that talks about the proof of their faithfulness and thirdly is the profit of their faithfulness. So when I close the conclusion, we look at the contrast of the destination of the lost and the saved could not be so more different. Pastor Lyra shared last week about what the end holds for the sinner. What the end holds for the sinner is a terrifying. They will spend eternity separated from God and from everything of beauty, purity, spirit. Those who reject Jesus Christ will spend eternity apart from his presence in hell. But those who receive him will enjoy an eternity spent in his presence in heaven. Five seconds after you die, you will already be where you are going to spend eternity. Let us look at our heart right now. Where would we go if we die within the hour? Will we go to heaven or will we go to hell? And are we contented with the place we are headed right now? I'm sure for each one of us, we know where we are going. But this teaching tonight is to prepare us to share with others that do not know God, that do not know Jesus, that have yet to be saved. So the conclusion really is not meant for us. It's meant for us to share to those so we can share to people who have said, would you like to be saved? So that you will be able to have the promise to receive the reward as a sin. You can be if you come to Jesus. And this is the promise that God gives in John 6, 47. He says, I assure you and most solemnly say to you that he who believes in me is Savior, Whoever adheres to, trusts in, relies on, and has faith in me already has eternal life that is now possessed it. And 1 Corinthians 2 9 says, But just as is written in Scripture, things which the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard, and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate reverence, who obey him and who gratefully recognize the benefits that we bestowed. So we would like to be saved. We can share this with him. And Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you and even show you great and mighty things which have been confined and hidden, which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish. So there is this conclusion we see the difference and my prayer tonight is that as we see the difference we will tell the lord lord i want to receive the rewards i want to receive the rewards that you have promised help me to be faithful. So the question we ask ourselves as we close tonight is this. Firstly, we must make sure we are safe. I believe every single person in this chamber is safe. If so, let us praise him for what we have here and what we will enjoy there. Secondly, is that not just saving yourself, you are safe, but are you faithful? faithfully serving Jesus today because the key to the profit or to the reward is based on our faithfulness. If you are safe, yes, you are safe. You will go to heaven. But the crowns on the judgment day or the judgment seat of Christ, you will not receive any crowns. It says, are you faithfully serving Jesus today? Or have you allowed coldness and compromise to enter your heart? So my prayer is that God, tonight, 
to every single person that is here in this chamber. You have spoken to them through this sharing tonight. If so, let us pray. Let us pray and let us tell God tonight with a contrite heart in humility say, God, I have not been faithful serving you. But tonight, as I hear this message tonight, I want to make sure, or I want to be in a position where I can say without a shadow of a doubt that I will receive the profit or the reward. So I want to just challenge you and say, call out to God tonight. Say, God, I have fallen short. If you were to bring me home tonight, I do not know whether I, I will go to heaven, but whether I will receive those fraud rewards. But I want to make sure. So I want to challenge you to just open your hearts. I'm going to invite Professor Selenia to come back in now as I finish tonight. She takes over. I want her to pray for us, including myself. I want her to pray for us tonight. And just Jesus. pray for us and just take us on from here. Say, God, oh God, through your Holy Spirit, Lord. Through your Holy Spirit. Shala Rabba Gama Shukala Rabba Gaya Shukala Rabba Yashuku Karaba Gama Shukala Rabba Kala Rabba Kanda Rabba Gama Shukala Rabba Gaya Shikata. Reko Kokata Rabba Yashikata. As you close your eyes and open your hearts to the Lord, allowing the spirits of the Lord to remind you of what you have done and what you are doing now. Hallelujah. For the sake of his name and for his glory. Are you serving the Lord faithfully? Or are there are times in your life that you want to stop and entertaining the thoughts of giving up? It's time for us to open our hearts unto the Lord and asking God for forgiveness. Asking God for forgiveness that we entertain, that we entertain the thoughts of doubts. For the Lord God says that your labor will not return to him empty and void, but it will accomplish greater things according to his purpose. Jesus is coming soon. And the reward, your reward, my reward is already in his hand. Jesus is coming soon. In your reward, in my reward, is already, it is it. Sharabagaya sikala rabaya shata. Rabagama shikala rabagama sikala rabagama shukutu. Rabagama shukala rabagama shikala rabakala rabagara bagama shikala rabaya shata. Rabagama shikala rabakanda rabagama shikala rabagaya shikata. Rabagama Sikala Rabagaya Shikala Rabaya Shada. In Revelation chapter 20, verses 11. Hallelujah. Rabagaya Sikala Rabaya to 15. Rabagaya Sikala Rabagaya Sikala Rabagaya Shikala Rabaya Shada. Rabagama Sikala Rabaya Shikatala Rabagaya Sikala Rabaya Shukata. Shakata rabagaya sikata rabagaya sikala rabagaya sikata. Shakata rabagaya sikala rabagaya sikata. Shakata rabagaya sikala rabagaya sikata. It says that there are books and book in heaven. Rabagaya sikala rabagaya sikala rabagaya sikata. Sakata rabagaya sikala rabagaya sikala rabagaya sikata. Riku kukata rabagaya sikata. In all of and everything that we have done, rabagaya sikata rabagaya sikete. Yanda rabag are all recorded in the books. Rabagaya sikala rabagaya sikata. Rabagaya sikata. And because you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. 
your name is now written in the book. Yara bagaya sikala rabagaya sikata. And verse 15 it says, if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. He was thrown into the lake of fire. Shara bagaya sikala rabaya shadda. Rabagama sikele rebakakala rabagaya sikata. Shanda rabagaya sikala rabagaya sikala rabaya shadda. Rabagama sikela rabakanda rabagaya sikela rabaya shadda. Rabagama shikela rabagama sikela rabagaya sikela rabagaya shukuto. Yanda rabagaya sikela rabaya shanda. Watch the invitation tonight. Hallelujah. It says, Are you saved? Are you faithfully serving Jesus today? Sharabagaya sikata, rabagaya sikata. Rabag, in your present journey, are you faithfully serving Jesus? Rabagama sikala, rabagaya sikala, rabagaya sikata. Shakala, rabagaya sikata, rabagaya sikala, rabagaya shada. Father God, we declare, O Lord, and we decree the supernatural touch of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Rabagaya sikala, rabagaya shikata. It's some are not hala rabagaya sika sure of her or his salvation. Rabagaya, you can talk and open your hearts to God and give your life to Jesus. Rabagaya sikala, rabagaya sukuloro boyushakata. And if you experience dryness in your spirit or not, if you you experience hallelujah dryness in your walk hallelujah in, in, in your service to the lord rabagaya sikata pray and pray and pray that the lord god will restore you back to your calling that the lord god will restore you back to your calling sharabagaya sikala rabaya shanda let the fire inside of us oh lord god will be quickened tonight in the name of jesus christ who rabagaya sikala rabagaya no more dryness, no more barrenness, oh Lord God, in our journey. Lord, let each every one of us, oh Lord God, Lord God, each one tonight will experience, oh Lord Jesus, the special and the mighty move of the Holy Spirit that will brought us, oh Lord God, into a place, oh Lord God, of victory. Allowing us, oh Lord God, to see what is happening in the heavenly realms, oh Lord God. God, allowing each one of us to hear your voice, oh Lord God, allowing each one of us, oh Lord God, to see our very purpose in our present journey, the God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as you present to the servant this morning, as I soak myself to you, that we are now entering into a season, oh Lord God, of pregnancy. It is a spiritual pregnancy, O Lord. Rabagaya sikata in a season of giving birth, O Lord God. It's coming, it's coming, O Lord God. Sharabagaya, that's why some, O Lord, some of your people in this, in your chamber, experience, O Lord God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Rabagaya sikata, a painful journey in their lives. But it says, O Lord God, it is natural for this time. Hallelujah, because we are in a season, O Lord God, some are seasoned in giving birth. Oh God, tonight we pray and we declare that you will that you will strengthen each one, oh Lord God, tonight. Rabagaya sikata, as he says to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. Rabagaya shikata. Hala rabakandareya sikala rabaya shikata. Open our eye for us to see the Lord God, the greater reward that is waiting ahead of us. Rabagaya sikatala rabayunde. As you says to Paul that we need, O oh Lord God, to excel. Excel in our faith. Excel in our knowledge, O oh God. Excel, O oh Lord God, in our enthusiasm, O oh Lord. Sharabagama sikelereya shande. That even as we sleep, oh Lord God, you will minister to us. Lord God, let everyone in this God's chamber will dream dreams, oh Lord. Let everyone in your in this God's chamber will see vision, oh Lord God. Let everyone, oh Lord God, will receive, oh Lord God, the wisdom, the knowledge, oh Lord, the anointing to understand everything that you reveal to us in spirit, oh Lord God. Sharabagaya sikala.
Thank you, Lord, for blessing my BFFYY. -Y. Thank you for blessing Mama Grace, for Elsie, for Brother Jakey Hunt, Amen. for Sister Amen. Elizabeth, oh Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for the strength that you gave to Shirley. Thank you for the wisdom that you gave to Sister Alma, for Hong Chan, oh Lord, for Tan Shing Hok, oh Lord. Thank you, that God, in the name of Jesus, that every day of his life you encourage him, oh Lord God, to continue loving and serving you. Thank you, the Lord God, for inspiring Jessica, oh Lord God, as she gave her life unto you to the fullness oh lord god thank you for increasing her faith to believe that in you nothing is impossible for ruth oh lord I pray for the revelation knowledge, O oh God. For Esther Muhan, I pray the Lord God for the strength, O oh Lord. Strength upon strength, O oh Lord, that she be able to surpass all his her life testing in the name of Jesus. And the Lord God is saying this to you, Esther, you have to be strong. For the Lord God has given you this Esther anointing. Rabaguma shikala rabagama shikala rabaganda. The Lord God is fighting for you. He is not against you, but he is always fighting for you. And you will remain victorious, say yes, the Lord. I declare healing to your brokenness tonight in the name of Jesus. I declare healing to your soul tonight in the name of Jesus. Rabagaya sikata. Rekukukata rabagaya sikata. Every thoughts that the enemy injected in your mind. Rabagaya sikata. I burn it right now by the fire of God. Rabaguma shikala rabagaya sikata. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are good and noble. Rabagaya sikata. The spirit of the Lord will remind it to you starting tonight. Rabaguma shikata. For our see, oh Lord God. Thank you for her life, oh Lord Jesus. Jesus. Lord, I pray and declare the Lord God as she continue, Lord God, embracing her purpose, oh Lord. She will grow in faith. She will grow in loving you, the Lord. You will use her mightily, Lord God, for your glory. You will bless the work of her hands, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the demons of bankruptcy, the Lord God, in Jesus' name. And I release right now the anointing of Joseph. I release right now the anointing that comes from the Lord. Anointing on how to produce wealth. The Lord God is with you. The Lord God is fighting for you. The Lord God healed your brokenness. Past is past, say yes, the Lord. It's time for you to rise up and see your victory and see your victory and see your victory and see your victory. Even the victory of your husband, even the victory of your husband's family. There is a restoration to your business. There is a restoration to your business. Believe this, my daughter, say yes, the Lord. I am your God, and I'm saying this to you. I will grant all of your heart's desire, and I will bless you beyond and above what you ask or think, say yes, the Lord. Ramakukata, for you are not a tail, but a head, says God. Rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, say yes, the Lord. Rabaguma shikala rabagaya sikata. Strength be upon me, Loa, O God. The healing touch of the Lord be upon her. Oh God, the blessing emotionally be upon Sally tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, I pray and declare for the restoration. Everything that enemy taken and stolen from her, you will return it back to her without delay, oh God. Lord, you will bless Sally, the Lord, with your wisdom. Lord God, there will be a financial increase, oh God. You will grant her heart's desire. To my BFF Ditas, oh Lord. We thank you for her life, oh Lord Jesus. She is, oh Lord God, she is a great representation of your kindness, oh God. The Lord God is saying this to you, my beloved daughter. Look at the stars in the sky, say yes, the Lord. Rabagoma, I promise that I gave to Abraham. I gave it all to you, say yes, God. Rabagoma, I will increase your influence, say yes, the Lord. I will take care of you. I will take care of your present journey. I will take care of your future for your life and the future of your children is secured because their future is in my hands, say yes, the Lord. Hear not, my beloved, say yes, God, for you are not alone in your journey. You are surrounded by my presence, say yes, the Lord. You are surrounded by my presence, say yes, the Lord. You will not fall. You will not fall. You will walk and not be afraid and you will run and not fall down, say yes, the Lord. 
For I am in control of everything. I am your strength, say your God. I am your victory, say your God. And I will crown your effort with success, say yes, the Lord. For clear, the Lord God is saying this to you. Rabba Gaya Sika Tarabaku. Prepare your hearts, my beloved. Rabba Gaba Sika Lara Bagaya Shikata. For the season, Rabba Gaya Sika Lara Bakuma Shikata. Rabba Kaka Tarabakukata. For the season of fruitfulness, say yes, the Lord is coming, say yes, God. Rabba Gaya Sikata. In a form of supernatural, and in a form of natural, say yes, the Lord. For I will bless you, say yes, God. You are the tree planted by the streams of the living water. Your leaf shall not wither. Your Rabba God, you will bear much fruit in his season. And the Lord God says, you have to prepare also your heart, because I will bless your womb on the day that is coming, say yes, the Lord. Rabba Guma Shikala, Rabba Guma Sikata. Reiko Kukata, Rabba Gaya Sikata. Reiko Kukata, Reiko Kukata, Rabba Gaya Sikata. And you, you will reign you get and say as for me in my house we will serve the lord i saw it in my spirit this word two will become one and the two will become one sharabagama sikala rabagaya shikata rabagama sikala rabaya shikata it is so clear and true the day that you will face on the altar yarabaga because you will not remain single Shara bagama sikala rabakanda rabagaya shikata rabakuka tara bagaya sikala rabakanda for the Lord God will bless the work of your hands the Lord God will bless the business that He entrusted under your care hala rabaga the Lord God will give you expansion and extension hara bagaya sikala be strong my beloved say yes the Lord for I will not fail you say yes God for Stephen the Lord God is saying this to you rabagama sikala rabagaya shikata Embrace my righteousness. Embrace my righteousness, say yes, the Lord. Meditate my words day and night, say yes, God. Rabba Gama Sikata. For mommy God, the Lord God is saying this to you. I will take care of you and I will take care of your children. You are kneeling down and interceding for the victory of your children. I saw it in my spirit promotion to your son. Rabba Gama Shikala, you are praying for this. He is praying for this. And the Lord God says, because you did not give up, say yes, the Lord. I will grant more of what you ask and expect to happen, say yes, God. Oh my God, you are so great, O oh Lord. So loving, O oh Lord Jesus, for blessing, O oh Lord God, Brother Leo Hasildo, for granting all of his heart's desire, O oh Lord God. Father, we thank you that all transactions that you gave to him, O oh Lord, it will come to pass. It will come into reality. For me, Chain, O oh Lord, we thank you for the healing touch of the Lord. I can I can feel it within my heart that sometimes you struggle, pain on your knees. Rabba Gaya Sikata, I command right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Halabag, that the knees and the tendons, hallelujah, designed to your knees right now. The bones designed to your knees right now. Rabba Gaya Sikala Rabba Yashanda will be strengthened right now and submit and subject. Hallelujah. Rabba to the one who created them in Jesus' name. I prophesy right now that the circulations of your blood will become normal. No more sickness right now. Rabba Gaya Sika can enter into your body for your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I declare when I decree right now. Rabba that the Lord God will restore your eyesight. 2020 vision in the name of Jesus Christ. Rabba Goma Shikala Rabba Ganda. I declare healing to your body tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Rabba Goma Sikata. Every thoughts and every words of defeat, every thoughts of sickness that the enemy injected in your mind, I burn it right now by the fire of God. And I declare right now in the name of Jesus Christ, all the curses from the first generation is the curses of sickness. Well, now has, has authority and not authorized to assault you and to touch you for your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Oh God, you are here. Rabagama shikala rabagaya sikata. Rabagama shikala rabagaya sikata. Mighty God, you are you are the source of strength of 
Apostle Romeo, the God. We thank you, the Lord, in the name of Jesus for that wisdom. We thank you, the Lord God, for using him mightily for your glory and for your honor, oh Lord. For Pastor Michelle, we thank you, the Lord God, for using them. Oh God, oh God, oh God, we declare your glory in your chamber tonight, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ for Sister Nieves, oh Lord. We thank you, the God, as she raising her hands every day, kneeling down, oh Lord God, to intercede and to pray. Oh God, for her family. Lord, even for the people that you entrusted under her care. I declare and I decree that all of her prayers, oh Lord God, will be answered starting tonight. Lord God, as you anoint, oh Lord God, her hands for this healing ministry. Lord God, let the anointing, oh Lord Jesus, to heal the sick. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, I pray and declare that you will bless, O oh Lord God, Pastor Rusalita. I declare the strength of the Lord and wisdom for Timothy, O oh Lord God, in Eli. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare right now the blessings of heaven. Hallelujah. I declare right now the blessings of heaven. Every doubts and fears right now are rebuked in the name of Jesus. For the Lord God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, peace, and sound mind. For the Gushin right now, I declare that you will experience that Gushim, hallelujah, in your journey. The Lord God will bless the soul of your lamb. Rabba Gaba Shikata, for Nane Lalein, I declare right now that special wisdom of the Lord. Hallelujah, to understand the thing that the Lord God revealed to you in a heavenly realm. For Pastor Harlow, we thank you for his life, oh God. We thank you for using mightily, even this coming Monday, uh, Saturday, as you will preach your words, oh Lord God, to the hundreds of pastors so, so Lord God, hallelujah, in the city, in the province, so Lord, I declare right now the revelation knowledge of the Lord be upon you. For the Lord God will grant all your heart's desire. The Lord God will bless your children and the Lord God will use them mightily for his glory. For us, I pray and I declare that the Lord God will take care of you. For the God is good church, I declare that the Lord God will use each one of you. Hallelujah for this, for this end time. Hallelujah. Rabbi Gaya said, move of the Holy Spirit. Rabbi Gaya, you will not be a spectators. Hallelujah. But be a hand and mouth of the Lord. Rabbi Gaya Shigata, let the healing touch of God be upon Sister Merle. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the anointing of worship. We thank you for the financial breakthrough, oh God. For Sister Floor, we thank you for blessing her. And another steps of promotion that you gave to her, including Sister Edsel, oh Lord God. Bless this family, the Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you that you will reward their kindness, oh God. For Pat Wong, I declare and I decree that you will use her, oh Lord. That, every, that you will use him, oh God. That every time I will speak your word, oh Lord. Every time that you will speak your word, hallelujah, the words, oh Lord God, are covered, enveloped, oh Lord God, by the anointing, oh Lord Jesus, of victory, that everyone may hear the word, they will receive life in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for opening the doors for him, oh Lord God, doors in other nations, oh Lord God, to represent you. For Michelle, oh Lord God, for Pastor Michelle, I thank you, the Lord God, for blessing her mightily, inducing her, oh Lord God, in her life for your glory. Thank you for your word tonight, oh God. Thank you for your word tonight, oh God. Thank you for your word tonight, oh God. Thank you for using Brother Jiki Han, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you will continue to use her for your glory. For Sister Elizabeth Chong, oh Lord, use her, oh Lord, use her, her life, oh God, for signs and wonders and miracles, oh God. Father, we honor you. Thank you. You are so faithful. You are so faithful. You are so faithful. You are so faithful. Are so faithful. Let us lift up our hands towards heaven. And Sister Alma will close us with the word of prayer. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, we just thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your very presence in this chamber. Father, loving Father, perfect Father, Jehovah, the great I am. Lord God, we're just overwhelmed with your great presence, Lord, and the revelation lord god and revealing to us your heart for each one of us lord god we thank you lord for your word 
We thank you, Lord God, for teaching us to be faithful, to be steadfast, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you, knowing that you are battling for us, Lord God, as we suffer, as we endure, Lord God. Thank you so much for your Holy Spirit that is guiding us every step of the way, Lord God, teaching us, Lord God, to proclaim the gospel, Lord God, and that we will be able to prove, Lord God, our faithfulness in the gospel and in you, Lord Jesus. And in the end, Lord God, that we will be able to profit that we, you are going to teach us how to walk on this narrow road with our eyes fixed on you and and the, our eyes on the goal for the mark of the highest calling, Lord God. The crowns are in your hands waiting for us, Lord God. Thank you for teaching us, Lord God, teaching us to walk in the Spirit in this, the last days. We thank you for the people you have given us along the way, Pastor Alianet and Pastor Roming, Pastor Ray, Sister Juvi, Pastor Arnold, God is good, Pastor Philip, Pastor Jet, all the pastors who are in this chamber, Lord God, they are shepherds after your own hearts, Lord God, giving us knowledge and understanding of you, Lord God. Bless them mightily, exceedingly, and abundantly, Lord God, as they remain faithful in the calling that you have placed in their hearts. Oh, Father God, we are so overwhelmed with your love. We can feel your love right now. We thank you, Lord God, for Brother J.K. Han, for Pastora Lyra, and for all the other speakers in this chamber, for the teachers, for the ministers, we thank you, Lord God, for giving us this calling, Lord God. And we just want to declare Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us, for he has anointed us all to preach the good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to restore the sight of those who are blind, and to declare the year of the Lord's favor. And we just want to say, Lord God, we are victorious in you, and no weapon fashioned against us, Lord God, and our intimacy with you as we seek you daily, Lord God, as we press, press on. Lord God, so that we will know you more and more each day. No weapon fashioned against this will prosper. No weapon fashioned against our calling, the purposes you have for us will prosper. No weapon fashioned against our family, their, their repentance and salvation will prosper. We thank you, Lord God, for your goodness. You're a good, good God. And we just want to honor you and bless you and exalt you and thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all you, that you will be doing, Lord God, all for your greater glory. We give you ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus, for your most precious blood that is soaking each one of us right now. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us to be like Jesus, humble, having a servant's heart, and most of all, obedient to, to your will, Father God. We just want to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you. All in your mighty name, Lord Jesus. All precious saints, say Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you so much, Sister Alma. Praise God for you. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
this next week next week uh sister engineer uh, christine she's not available because of her assignment in her workplace so i will be teaching next week amen from revelation chapter 14 14 to 20 when the judge calls his court order praise god so again please invite your friends praise the lord hallelujah and if you have now your praise reports you can connect to bff yy glory to god let us declare jesus ring seven times three two one Jesus 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 Jesus